Hello everyone, my name is Brian Camion. I'm a technology teacher and school counselor in Dearborn, Michigan, in the Dearborn Public Schools. Today I'm going to show you a project, it's called the Bowling Spreadsheet Project, and it will help students uh, understand a little bit about how spreadsheets work in a very basic way. You can use this project for introducing spreadsheets, demonstrating real life uses of sums and averages, and of course you can introduce the use of formulas and functions in spreadsheets. We'll be using some very basic formulas and functions uh, to create our spreadsheet. And then I'm going to have all the links for this in the description of in the video below. So while we get started. So I'm going to be um, showing you some examples first. And here's what the example project will look like more or less. I used uh, four fictitious names over here, Jim, Nick, Pedro, and Luke, and I put in some dummy data here, just made up some numbers here, and then I've got totals that are running over here, totals running over here, and averages over here. Now, one of the things that I did find out is that um, a lot of my students really weren't familiar with bowling too much. I mean, they may have been bowling before, but they've never been on a team. They don't understand how the game is scored and all that. So I had to give them a little bit of background information about how, how this actually works. Um, what I did is uh, I've, I'm also going to include a link to these directions here, and you can use them as a guideline to create your own, or you can use mine if you like to. It's perfectly okay. Um, in order to bowl three games, though, to get the data that they need for the spreadsheet, I had them go to this particular website here. This is not a true bowling game. Um, in our district, um, pretty much anything with the word game is blocked um, through filtering software. So we can't get to a lot of the actual bowling games. But this one allowed me to come in. You, you can test it out in your own district. You know, Try some searching for some uh, bowling games and see if uh, students can get through to play those or not. But this one I found is actually serves two purposes. It lets you brush up on your uh, basic math skills as well when you're trying to bowl. So here's uh, what example we can use. So what we're going to be doing first is um, instructing the students that they're going to be um, bowling three games. Okay. And so w once they bowl three games, for, at the end of each game, they're going to need to write down the score because they won't be able to get back to it. And once the game is over, it's pretty much it. So they're going to need to write down three scores of three games. And then what they're going to do to make a bowling team is they're going to get the three scores of three other students for a total of four scores on their scorecard. So they're going to need data from three other students. And they just walk around to another student um, and get their information that they after they're done playing their game. And then um, it doesn't matter if one student's on more than one team, too, you know. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the data. So here's how this game works here. For example, you can look up here. You have to do this quickly. It says click on all pins greater than five. Well, this one's equal to five, so I'll click that. Um, this one, this one. And when you hit roll now, it's going to hopefully give me, a, give me a strike. Yeah, so I got a strike. So my score was 10. And it tells you which ones you got right, and then you click next frame. And then when you're done with 10 frames, it'll give you a score right here. And then they would write that information down. What I did is we're going to use my um, dummy um, uh, data here, and we're going to insert this into a new spreadsheet here. And it explains pretty well in here what you're supposed to be doing uh, to complete this assignment. And when you're done, they're also going to create a graph as well. So what I'm going to do is, uh, just to kind of speed things up here for us, I'm going to pretend that I went and collected the data from everybody. I'm just going to copy this um, information here. And then I'll make a new spreadsheet. So you can kind of see how it goes from scratch. Now, if you've never used spreadsheets before, um, you're going to probably want to familiarize yourself with how all these things work. Um, you can use either Excel, or in this case, I'm using Google Sheets, which is in the Google um, suite of software. You can get, they have uh, docs and spreadsheets. It's called Sheets, and then they have a presentation uh, program called Slides. And um, 
you, I would encourage everyone to name their project first. Otherwise, you have a whole bunch of them that are called untitled spreadsheets. So we'll call this. So there's my name right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, paste in the data right here. And there it's not exactly in the right spot. So I'm going to start to move it up a little bit here. So everything's kind of um, close in the right spot, actually. I need to go up one more. There we are. Um, in spreadsheets, a lot of times when you're setting up uh, data sets like this, cell number A1 a lot of times will be left blank. And that's just so that it, it's less confusing. You can see that these are the three games that we bold here, and these are the names of the students over here. So it just if you put something here, it just uh, tends to add confusion because you don't know if you're labeling this row or this column. So usually it's just left blank. It's not always the case, but in this case it is. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add totals. For game one, for example, we want the total to show up down here. Okay, so I'm going to put in my header totals. All right, so I'm going to total these up. So the easiest way to do this would really just be to um, select these three here, these three scores, go over to the functions, and when you click on it, it's going to give you five basic functions that are the ones you use most often. In this case, we'll use sum because we want to add them all up. Click on sum. And here's the formula right here, but don't click on anything else because if you do, it is going to add information to this formula and you don't want that to happen. So all you want to do is hit um, enter if you have a PC or return on a Mac and it will put that total right there for you. So if you want to have them practice this, just do this a couple more times. And there's a pretty good chance that there, there may be some students that are having some trouble with this, you know, highlighting, because sometimes when they highlight them, if they hover there too long, it just might move the data. So you just have to tell them, so you have to kind of go quick, click it, and, you know, move it right away. So in this one right here, we're going to have this one will be our um, totals going this way. So for Jim, we're going to add up his three games. And Nick and Pedro and Luke, they're going to add up all their three games going this way. So I'm going to start over here. Same procedure. Now, I was showing you kind of a long way to do it. There's actually another way you can do this um, to get this in there quickly. You can select the cell that you just totaled, you summed right there, and I'm going to copy it, and then we're going to paste that all right in here. And you see there's all your information you have for the totals right there. This column over here is going to be for average. Now you don't need a total average. You don't need to total up the averages and put them down here, but you do need an average for each student. All right, see so what is the average of the three games that they bold right here. Now, the problem is that if you highlight these three here and you go over and you pull down average, it's going to put the average here because it looks for the next cell after you, the ones that you highlighted. It's going to try and put it over here and that would be wrong. So there's a way around this. What you do is you click in the cell first where you want the average to show up then go to your functions, click average. Now highlight the ones that you want to average and you see that it's filling in the, the cell, this is called cell references, for the average function. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then it puts it in there. Now usually when you look at bowling averages, they're, they're rounded off to the whole numbers, to the nearest one. So if I click on this, there's, at least in uh, Google Sheets, there's a decreased decimal place. In Excel, I think you might have to use a rounding function or something. So what I'm just going to click this button here until all the decimals go away, and it's going to round it up to 195. And then you can do the same thing for all of them there, or you can do my favorite, which is just a copy and paste. Copy, 
and then we'll paste these in right here. And there's our three averages, all rounded too, because we copied this one was rounded as well, so it's going to round all of these as well. And so there's our basic data. Now, what I also um, have students do is to create a chart of their three games. We won't need totals and averages in the chart. Um, it kind of tends to clutter it up. You just want the game data. So I'm going to highlight the three, the four students and their games, or three games that they bold. All right. And then over here, there's a chart function right here. So I'll click on this one. And it takes a little time. It'll pop up eventually. There it is. And probably the best kind of chart to use for any of these is this one right here. It's just a regular old bar chart, and you can kind of see here what it's going to look like. If you want to change or, or customize the colors or anything, this is where you would do it is over here. But, um, you know, it's, it's up to you if you like these colors. You can always change the colors in, in here. I insert the chart. And there it is covering up all my data. So all you have to do is just go up here, just grab it, and you get that little fist, which means that you're grabbing it. And then you are done. Um, one thing you could change, see this is game one, two, and three. It kind of takes these headers here and puts them here. If you just click on them uh, twice, you just put down, um, you can put down your team name. By here. You know, if you want the kids, you could say, hey, give your team a name, you know, and then you can put their team name there. And what this is showing you is so you can compare how well each player did on each of their, these three games. And you might want to ask them to draw a conclusion. You say, well, you know, draw a conclusion. What did you notice about each student's games as they played? If this was game one, two, and three, and, you know, in this circumstance, they might say, oh, it looks like... Um, the players all got better from the first game to the third game. Their scores went up, and they might ask them to explain why do you think that might have happened. And they may come up with an answer such, such as, um, oh, well, they had a chance to practice, and they got better by the third game. They were more used to it. Um, all sorts of interesting explanations could be here. Now, in reality, their scores were, will not probably look like this since I made this data up. I, I intentionally did this. So... In your case, they may be all over the place, and you just have to draw some kind of a conclusion to that as well. Well, I hope this uh, helps explain this project. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them at the bottom of the video, and I'll be sure to respond to you um, as quickly as possible. And also look for the links to the directions for this project as well. And I hope uh, this goes well for you, and I'd like to hear from you if um, you had any issues or problems with it or weren't exactly uh, sure how to proceed.